All right, what is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing today? Welcome here to our Week 5 NFL Preview. How are we doing, Tom? How are we doing, Dom? What's good? What's up, guys? Dude, we're like, we're almost a third of the way done with the regular season. It's kind of been flying by. Not so. fast enough when you're a Giant fan. <laughs> what are we on, Drake Maywatch right now? Uh, hopefully Caleb Williams watch if they keep losing. They got they get the Dolphins, they get the Bills. Listen. But, yeah, you got to really start tanking though now because you got some ground to make up because the, the Bears have like an extra step because they're already trash and then they have the, the Panthers and trash with Panthers, them. Yeah. That's like pushing them along. They get a little extra steps there. So yeah, we're just pretty much going to be talking about five games that we think are going to be the most exciting ones for uh, week five. And then we'll talk about some upsets, maybe talk about some college stuff as well, kind of what's going on in like uh, the football sphere. We'll start off with what game do you guys want to start off? Titans, Colts. Dom was hyping this game up. I thought we should have talked nah. about the Steelers Ravens here, but you want to talk about Anthony Richardson versus Ryan Tannehill. I mean, winner does control the AFC South in October. Hey, I mean, to be fair, Kenny Pickett has looked awful the past few weeks and the Ravens have been rolling. I'm not expecting that game to be that close. Um, Tennessee, Indy, this whole division is kind of like up in the air. So every divisional game matters specifically in this division. Um, the Titans have beaten the Colts five straight times now, and the Colts have played two. Sh uh, yeah, the Colts have played two straight overtime games. So them having to play a tough Titans team, I think this is going to be a very good game, in my opinion. Yeah, I think I as long as the uh, the Colts don't jump out too far ahead, then it's going to be a really solid game um, all around. Because the Titans, we've seen, they are not a team that can play from behind. But hopefully, another solid jump air fifteen though to push my narrative. <laughs> Yeah, I was watching kind of just the highlights from the Titans uh, Bengals game, and like obviously Burrow didn't look great, but they were just sending the pressure. And like Vrabel, man, like he really knows how to defensive scheme against like some other teams specifically. I wonder how he's going to go up against like Anthony Richardson for the first time, how he's going to contain against him. Because Richardson's fast, but he's not like the fastest quarterback that you would be going up against. But I would say like you're, you're going to obviously have to game plan around it. I feel like the Titans are going to win this one on the road, but I feel like, honestly, I think it could be a very ugly game. I feel like, um, I, like the Titans are probably a better team. Their defense is better, and the Colts' uh, D-backs have been, like, just really, really, really bad. Um, wide receivers have field days against them, but luckily the Titans don't really have any good receivers. Um, Disrespecting DeAndre Hopkins, okay. I mean, like... <laughs> all right, fine. I guess just playing DeAndre Hopkins, but Traylon Burks is hurt, and Chico Conco, I guess, is there. Uh, number two option. So, I don't know. I kind of I think it's a very winnable game here. For, uh, it's in Indianapolis. Um, Colts coming off a heartbreaker, and I'm going to stick with my boy Anthony Richardson. So I'm going to uh, pick the Colts. Yeah, I think the fact that the Titans are 0 2 on the road, I think they're due to finally get a road win. And I said earlier, the Colts play two straight overtime games. So I think if you combine that fatigue with Derrick Henry just um, running right up the middle, I think that could be enough for the Titans to pull out this win. Yeah, I believe the Titans are also going to win this game on the road, and I, I didn't mention it there, but I'm I'm sad to say that DeAndre Hopkins might be washed, and it might it might be time we would have to either admit that or he's going to have to turn this around because he's not getting so any younger. I know. Just dumb. I'm not. Well, I think he's washed compared to DeAndre Hopkins. I think he's a fine middle of the end receiver, but I don't think he's going to be the D Hop that we knew in Houston or Arizona. I don't think he's top twenty five. Ah, it's sad to say it really is and like it's crazy too because he was gonna get we thought traded to like a plethora of teams and then the cardinals just ended up releasing him which we're like oh my god okay like he's gonna end up with playing with josh allen or patrick mahomes and then it's like oh he's gonna go to new england and play with mac jones and then ends up in tennessee and is now playing with Tannehill. i just i don't know i guess maybe just there wasn't a lot of love for him around uh the league and maybe this is why I think the Titans gave him a big comment, but they gave him like two for 25. They gave him like 13 million a year. I feel like the Bills and the Chiefs probably just didn't give him anything close to They probably gave him like a year for like five mil. Or like just like, you know, just like, a, like I guess a prove a deal, even though he's already proved it, but you know what I mean? Um, but I mean, he's 31 now. He's averaging versus yards per game. I mean, this is the lowest yards per game of his career uh, besides his rookie year. I know it's, yeah, I know it's, it's like four games. games in, but just based off the start that he's on, might be a little premature, but. Um, I'm still saying that he's probably not a top 25 wide receiver at this point, and especially a a after this year with the contract um, going into next year. Yeah, so we'll see about him going forward. Um, this would be a big week to turn it around, like the Colts secondary, not the greatest in the league. Uh, we could talk about, I'm trying to think of like what game next you guys want to talk about, Jags, Bills. Wait, I didn't even realize we had another London game. 
Yeah, Jackson. Yeah. Wow, the Jags are staying in London. Wow. Okay. I didn't even realize that. Are they staying that- or are they coming back and going back? I feel like they would have to stay, right? They st- no way they're they coming stayed. back. Yeah, they stayed. I mean, <laughs> listen, like, I mean, they have a week. Like, they they, they could technically like go yeah, for like four days. That'd be a travel nightmare. No, but teams usually go to London like four days in advance. Anyway, they're not. Oh, okay. They stayed right, in then. London for sure. And yeah. if they didn't, I look like an idiot right now. <laughs> Dude, they're really like the England team. Like I knew they were, but like two weeks in a row, that is just crazy. It's this is their eleventh game now in London. They're five and five all time. That's wild. And this one, so last week was it considered a Falcons or Jags home game? Jags, and this week this it's week Buffalo, will be Bills. Yeah, because that would yeah, suck yeah. if they lost like two home games to to London. Um, so this will be a good one though. I don't know. The Jaguars have definitely been a little flat this season, at least offensively. They've had some mm-hmm. ugly wins, and they've had like they lost to the Chiefs. Like the win against uh, the Falcons last week, I don't think really impressed people too much. And the Bills are coming off. One of the more impressive wins of the season overall, just stomping the 3 0 Miami Dolphins. Honestly, though, I could see an upset just because, like, the Jaguars are staying in London. It's kind of their home turf, even though it's not really like they're getting like a home field advantage. Because if you watch any fan in that game, they're wearing a different jersey around the league. But I could honestly see the Jaguars winning this game just because, like, the Bills, like, we, well, Dom said it last week where the, Dolphins were bound to have like a letdown after blowing out the Broncos. Could we see that from the Bills this week? I feel like it could be something like that. I feel like yeah, I mean, it definitely makes sense. But I think I'm still gonna pick Buffalo. Buffalo looks like it's they're not just like it's not like the Dolphins. Obviously, they had a historic day scoring 70 points, but like the Bills were blowing everybody out. Like they lost the Jets week one, and they just like I guess lit a fire under them and like all right, that's it. Like we might never lose again. So they look. Diggs had three touchdowns. A fantastic game. Um, Matt Milano looks like defensive player of the year and the linebackers replaced Tremaine Bernard he's playing fantastic to start the year um, but tough for Trey White he just tore his Achilles and maybe that opens the door for like Calvin really a little bit to have a little bit of bounce back because he's been super slow since like the first half of week one so I think that I think Buffalo still pulls it out though yeah I'm, I'm gonna build off what Tom said uh, the Bills have scored 37 more than 37 points in their last three games and the Jaguars have scored less than 17 offensive points the last three games. And the Bills have the number six defense. I think this game has potential where the Bills could easily win by two scores, I think. Um, I think you're right. It could be a like close I, game, but I think I it think could, it's but be I don't, by a couple scores. Like the Jaguars' defense, I think, will be able to hold Buffalo to less than 37. But I also don't think the Jaguars' offense is going to be able to score that well against his defense. And, um, I mean, I could be completely wrong because the last time these teams played... I don't know if you remember. It was nine, in 2021. 6. 9-6. So, yeah. very boring slugfest game there. And I'm expecting the Bills to just kind of walk in and steamroll them in London. But I think that the Bills could win this game pretty easily. And if Jacksonville loses this game and then goes back home 2-3, and three, I think they might have to uh, reevaluate some things. I'm just hoping for a Josh Allen on Josh Allen sack. That's all I care for out of this game. But I, So, I'll be a little bit different. And I said the Jaguars are going to win. Just kind of like... An upset here. I mean, it would be weird for the Bills to start off three and two with this being like one of their L's, but could totally see the Bills winning this game. But I'll, I'll go with the Jaguars in this one um, to go in advance to three and two on the season. Uh, we could talk about what other games, Dom, did you want to talk about specifically? Was it the Eagles Rams? Yeah, that's one of them. I think that's going to be a good one. Yeah, this should definitely be a good one too. Like, Eagles could go five and zero for sure. Like the Rams aren't a juggernaut by any means, and they could go to LA where it's not really a good home field advantage either in SoFi Stadium. Like there might be more Eagles fans than there are Rams fans over there. So this will be a good, I think, offensive game. Like the over is at fifty points. Like we could see like a nice little shootout between these two teams and finally see like Jalen Hurts get into rhythm. I'm gonna go. I'm going to go Rams, though. I think maybe the Rams pick up their first home win. I didn't think that they were going to be very good this year, and they've definitely proved me wrong. Shout out to Puka Nakuya. I'm just hoping that he is. He's going to be Offensive Rookie of the Year, and I don't think we're getting cut back this week, right? He practiced I hope today, he's back. but I think it was like McVay kind of gave like a very vague, like, you know, we'll see where he it's at. Play. That's pretty what all the beat reporters are saying, too, as well as like a lot of just people around the league. I think he, if he plays week, is going to be limited. Uh, so I think this is the last week of the full Puka Nakua show, and then maybe next week we'll see Cup kind of get eased into it more. I think it's all more so like what he's able to do, like for how many reps in a row, and then see like where he stands. Um, but I mean, Obi comes back. I mean, it would make make the offense way way cooler to watch with Puka and Cup and Kyron Williams and Tyler Higby. Like it'd be pretty interesting. Let Stafford get his uh, get his weapons back. First. 
for sure. Uh, did you think? Do you think Eagles win? Or do you think Rams win this game? I think the Eagles are probably gonna go in there and win, though. Um, like you said, it's the biggest thing. Like you said, the Eagles are going on the road, but they just had a fantastic win um, against Washington, where Hurts and AJ AJ Brown is back to his 2022 self, and I think they uh, give the Rams a bit of a problem here with their def- with the Rams defense a bit of a problem here. Like I said, the Eagles only need nine yards for a first down and 99 yards for a touchdown, so they're at a clear advantage to anybody. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, so for for this game, there's one team in this game that has the ninth best defense in the league and the fourth best offense in the league. Take a guess which team it is. It's got to be the Rams. Can we say the, the Rams? Rams <laughs> the Rams have the fourth best offense this year and the ninth best defense. And they have the second best passing offense. Philadelphia has the 28th ranked passing defense. I think there's potential for Stafford and Nakua, maybe Cup if he plays, where they might be able to just light up this defense and pull out the upset win. I mean, we saw last week, Sam Howell threw for almost 300 yards. This was a week after which he threw four interceptions in a game. So I think it's very possible the Rams win this game. Um, I do think I do think the Rams will win this game. I'll just come out and say it. And I think this will be the Eagles' first loss of the season. Okay, that's actually, you bring, do bring in good points, but I'm sticking with um, the Eagles as my pick here, so it's going to be two against one. Two against one. How did you guys did you guys do picks last week when you guys were previewing the games, or did you? Yeah, yeah. We well, we we did. We we both chose an upset. I did pick the Bucks over the Saints, so I was able to uh, get that. I think there I'm pretty sure for the the five games we previewed, I think I went five and zero, oh, and Tom, I think you went three and two because we were different on two of the games. Yeah, and I think we. I think we swapped the offense was one you were different on. I right? picked obviously picked the Bills, yeah. And then uh oh we did Ravens Browns. That was also before the Watson news, but I it was split obviously. Gotcha. Okay. Um and then we'll talk about the Chiefs Vikings game, another game that could definitely be high scoring. The Vikings saved their season last week by beating Carolina. To go to one and three, their days could still be numbered. Like you fall to one and four, that's a really tough hole to get out of. But with seven playoff teams, it's not impossible. And it, it seems like there is a big like kind of talent gap between the really elite teams and just basically everybody else in the middle of the pack this year. So I think it'll be high scoring. I'm honestly not as scared of the Chiefs, especially early in the season than I would normally be. I think like come playoff time, I'm more scared of Kansas City because they've been there and you know what Patrick Mahomes is going to do come January or February. But this game, I could see the Vikings winning this game. I think it could be a shootout, but in a sense where there's going to be mistakes made. So not like a sloppy game in that sense, but there's going to be some maybe boneheaded plays, maybe some bad uh, ref calls. It's going to be one of those. I'm going to go Vikings one at home. I'm going to go another, maybe this this would be considered an upset here. Uh, so I'm going to Definitely take an upset. Yeah. Well, yeah. Vikings beating the Chiefs at home. I guess maybe not a crazy upset, but keeping their season alive. Tom, what do you think? The Vikings are home? Yeah. Right? Yep. See, this is a spot where the Vikings just pull some crazy some some crazy uh like when they beat the bills last yeah. year yeah is like, taylor swift going to the game is she going to minnesota is she seeing a twins play so. twin twins playoff game and vikings game i think the twins will be on the road by then right uh, yeah whatever <laughs> the schedule uh, is the weekend uh i think it's They're probably on the road. saturday yeah the first yeah. what two would be in houston what's the spread yeah. of this Chiefs vikings game uh, it's four. down to four Bro, I think it I opened just Googled, around. I Googled Nixon. Vikings Chiefs, and the first suggested question is Is Taylor Swift going to Vikings Chiefs game? <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> and just so you guys know, no reports have confirmed her attending the game at US Bank Stadium. Yeah, dude, Travis Kelsey was kind of pissed about it, too. Like, just like all the attention I saw, like, on his podcast. But, um, I was just I'm gonna. A, I, think I'm, I think I'm gonna. I'm. You know, the Vikings do seem like a nice pick here. The Chiefs were out. seven and a half last week, which kind of blew my yeah. mind. And I, I Minnesota. Put, let, let Kirk Cousins hold on to his job for another week. Let's do it. Dom, clean sweep. Before I get into my pick, excluding the Chiefs, there are two teams that Patrick Mahomes has never beat. Take a guess who the two are. Uh, it's not the Bengals. Well, I mean, one of them, one one of them, of them should be the Vikings. Vikings. Yeah. <laughs> Has he played the He's yeah, definitely he played the Vikings. Vikings he's now, never right? played the Vikings. He's never played the Vikings. It's the one team he's never played. Oh, so he's beaten this other team now. No, he hasn't. Or he's the, he hasn't uh, this team. Give me the Saints. Tom, you got to guess. Is it an NFC or AFC? We're doing hints now. Uh, AFC. Oh, fuck me then. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say gonna change mine. the... I, mean, I know he beat the Bengals in the playoffs, but that was a thing beforehand. Give Oh, Patriots. No, I'm he saying is 0-2 against the Colts. Oh, oh it's, he's, 
The Colts. He's 0-2 against the Colts. Did you guys hear me say Colts before you said Colts? Kind of. Huh? I'll take it. I'll <laughs> and take uh, it. he's he's 0-0 against Minnesota, the one team he's never played before. And I think he will pick up his first win against the Vikings this weekend. The Chiefs and Mahomes have the seventh best passing offense, and we know the Minnesota defense is just not good really whatsoever. And I think Minnesota struggled last week. Them coming home, I mean, I agree with you guys. This spread makes no sense. The fact that it opened at like six and now it's down to four makes me want to take the Vikings because maybe, like, maybe there's something I don't know. But I have to imagine the Chiefs win this game, so I'm going to take Mahomes in Minnesota. All right, but they're 2 1. Uh, can we stop beating the Colts yet? There was that trap game last year, right? Early in the last season, year, like yeah, week I think three. It was- I think, yeah, week two or three, I think it killed a decent amount of survivor pools. Yeah, because the Colts were not off to a good start with um, Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan is their quarterback. Yeah, well, what a time. All right, so we got definitely game of the week. 3-1 and one Cowboys going to San Fran. 4-0 and oh Niners, uh, one of the last two undefeated teams with the Eagles, who we talked about before. It's going to be a good game. Two really good defensive teams. I'm very confident in the Niners offense. Not as much in the Cowboys offense itself. I feel like it will be inconsistent at times i do think that the niners win this game and advance to five and oh um they like i'm remembering this correctly right beat the cowboys in the playoffs last year eliminated yeah it was with where Dak did not play good yeah Yeah, z got the center last play of the game i'm gonna go uh niners win this game uh i think they're one of the more complete teams if purdy doesn't make mistakes like he's not been doing all year i think they're gonna go and advance to five and oh yeah, I think, and also in a game like this against two real powerhouses, if it comes down to coaching, it's San Francisco ten times out of ten. I think Shanahan and um, his staff have a, are much more equipped to figure out how to stop Dak than Mike McCarthy's staff is to figure out how to stop um, the 49ers' offense and their defense as well. Dan Quinn's a fantastic um, defensive coordinator, though I will say, but I I think that it's going to be San Francisco here. Um, Dallas did look obviously fantastic last week against the Patriots, but they were down, Patriots down like 15 starters <laughs> at that point. So 40 on is a roll McCaffrey with four touchdowns last week. Ayuk with a fantastic game. DJ, DJ, Debo is going to be um, a little more healthy and Kittle hold the whole nine. Give me the, give me the 40 honors. Yeah. So Brock Purdy leads the NFL in passer rating, which is just a crazy thing to say. That just a guy that all the time just always like he, the, always he, always he wasn't even he wasn't even a starter last year at this time wasn't even thought about like at, at all playing in a game last year at this time and now here he is leading the NFL in passer rating through four weeks the one thing that does concern me the Cowboys defense is ranked number two but I think that might be skewed just because they destroyed the Giants the Jets and the Patriots so I don't I don't really know how good this defense is. I mean, the Cardinals beat them, and I don't think the Cardinals' offense is, like, electric by any means. So if you put them up against the Niners' offense, I think, again, I I like San Fran a lot in this game. I think they will win. And, like, there's just so many weapons. But last week, the Niners put up 30-something points and didn't use two of their main weapons. Like, Debo and Kittle did absolutely nothing last week, and they still were able to score 30. Like, this is a legit team that could expose the Cowboys' defense, in my opinion. There we go. Yeah, if there's one offense that's going to do it, it's going to be this one because they have to defend every single square foot of the field with the way the 49ers um, can attack with their weapons. So, yeah. There we go. Clean sweep for us. So, when you guys did your like upsets of the week last week, did you have to, did you guys just take any underdog or did you have them be like under a certain like spread or how'd you guys do it? Um, We did it. It couldn't be like, in, like a one, like, like at least like three. Okay. Okay. Anyone have one off like the top of their mind that they want to go with? Dom, you already got your your upset of the week. I got my I got my I got my notes. All right, let's hear it. Uh, I mean, we already discussed this game. I really do think the Rams will beat the Eagles this week. I mentioned just the matchup of the Rams passing offense, the Eagles passing defense. I mean, Mac Jones, who you declared dead on our Week Four recap, he threw for over 300 yards and three touchdowns against this defense. So if he can do that and he's not a good starter, I think Stafford and this Rams offense could have a field day. So I'm taking the Rams as my upset. All right, there it is there. Um, I did also say the Rams are going to win, but I won't choose them. I also did say that the Jaguars are going to win. 
and I would probably go with them as my upset. Um, I just think like them staying over in London like for an extra week will definitely give them an advantage. I think like Lawrence is due for a big breakout game. We'll see if they give Ridley more involved, keep feeding it to Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram, um, and ETN can maybe have a big game as well. I do think that this could be a high scoring early game, which would be cool because I feel like a lot of the 9 a.m. games really don't work out in that favor. Um, but if there's going to be another team I'm going to be biased, and I'm, I'm going to bet on them. I'm going to bet Steelers' money line for sure, but I won't use them as my pick because I'm clearly being biased there. I was thinking about my Mike Tomlin Coach of the Year pick the other day, and I was like, why did I do that? And I knew why, because <laughs> I'm biased, but you know, it would have been cool if it happened. Um, I think, well, I said it before. I did pick the Vikings against the Chiefs. Um, I think I'm going to stick with that for my uh, possible upset pick, but the Colts were only two-point underdogs against the Titans. If we're setting three as the number, uh, I'll roll with the Vikings. But if you guys want to let me squeak by with the Colts, I, I, I'll take them. So, but I think uh, we mentioned them both before, though. So, you know, I you know what I do like maybe they're six point underdogs. I kind of like Chicago Thursday night. Yeah, I mean it's Thursday, so against Commanders, gonna happen. Gross. It's gonna be yeah, it's gonna be a gross game. I'm not saying it's gonna be game of the year, but I think the Bears like they gotta win eventually, right? No way this is an O in seventeen team. Why not Thursday night in Landover, Maryland? I guess. I don't know. If, don't if there's know. one, if there's one, it could be against a Washington team that just got heartbroken in overtime against a team that, like, the division rival, overtime loss. Now they got to go play a really bad team in prime time. It, it, it smells like upset. Then again, this video will come out after this Thursday night game, so you guys can see if I was just like being dumb and. Um, arrogant saying that that the Bears are finally going to get a win but the Commanders have looked good this year for sure so um, Dom you wanted to talk uh, anything about college before we wrap up just kind of the week five uh, NFL preview yeah we'll just do a little bit of a catch-up just because uh, we haven't talked it really at all since our preview video um, there are a ton of undefeated teams at the top that all look like legit title contenders I mean is there any team for you guys that have stood out more like obviously Georgia was the heavy favorite. Michigan was the heavy favorite. But the list goes on and on of teams up top. Like, is there any team that has stood out to you guys so far this year? I really, I really like the way USC's looked. I mean, Colorado. The Colorado came back against them. Um, but like, aside from that, Caleb Williams pretty much looks unstoppable. And like somebody who's going to win two Heisman's in a row, and that and you, we know that never happens. But they're scoring fifty-five points, almost fifty points. Uh, they play Notre Dame and Utah back to back in a couple weeks. That's going to be a true test, and they finish off with Washington, Oregon, and UCLA. So, uh, the, like the real like tougher opponents haven't really come yet. But I mean, Alabama's played in two. Alabama's not as good, but they played in super close games. Georgia um, was in a super close game last week. It's it's a uh, looking like a very wide open field, like you said. And I think USC or Oregon, one of these Pac-12 teams, can wind up coming out and making the championship game. It would be funny as the Pac-12 gets disbanded and then they have the national championship winner. Um, <laughs> I did have USC in our college predictions as my national champion, so I'd like to see that. And my Caleb Williams Heisman pick is looking pretty good. Not saying that was an impressive pick at all. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> uh, it would be nice to still be right there. I would say, like, uh, like I'm obviously high on USC as well. I like Texas a lot. Me and Dom saw Texas week one game against Rice, um, where they looked okay. I mean, it's week one um, at that point. But they had, obviously, the amazing win against... Alabama. They had a nice win against the ranked Kansas team last week. So I'm kind of high on Texas. I think they could be one of the more complete teams when you look at the offensive and defensive side of the balls. But um, yeah, we'll see as maybe Michigan will play more tougher opponents and Georgia uh, will have to do the same and maybe look more impressive. But I do think that Texas honestly should be number one ranked, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, and no, I, I, I agree with that. There's the problem with the polls, and I've never noticed it as much as this year, is that the preseason hype bias is locking teams into positions. Like, if you're just comparing resumes of this season, the things that Texas has done, the things that Florida State has done, way better than anything Georgia has done. Michigan's played nobody, but they've steamrolled everybody, so it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But, like, Ohio State beat a Notre Dame team that it, people think is pretty good so like why is ohio state only four they've been rolling other teams i don't know it's one of those things that i've really noticed this year like lsu is three and two and they've lost to florida state and they lost to ole miss and they're still ranked their other three wins aren't really good by any means so it's just that preseason hype of oh this team is good and i've really noticed it this year with the rankings 
Yeah, I definitely agree there, but and you, and you did briefly touch upon um, Michigan senior Everybody was seeing they play some better competition. They play Penn State in three or four weeks, I think, I in think Beaver it's that, Stadium. Yeah. That, yeah. That, at that point, that might be game of the year up, up to that day. But I think Oregon plays USC that weekend, that week too. No, not Oregon. Um, Oregon plays somebody really good that week. I think it's the week of like November 10th. It's yeah, it's Veterans Day weekend. I know that. Okay, yeah. So all right, so so it's USA. So and they're gonna be, uh, in Oregon. So that's gonna be a, the two really really possible game of the year potentials uh, that weekend. Dom, who's your uh, who's your favorite out of the Pac-12 right now between Washington, Oregon, and USC? I'm not sure an Oregon State fan. No, no, no. <laughs> DJ Uyunglele is not leading them uh, much farther. Um, I think it has to be Oregon just because USC's defense does concern me. It's I bad. mean, like it's co- they good. gave up 41 to Colorado. I think they gave up 20 something to like an Arizona State team that is just not good whatsoever. Um, Oregon looks the most complete. They have the offense, they have the defense. And I am kind of scared of Washington. I was watching Washington played Cal, I think two weeks ago, and Washington had a 14 nothing lead before their offense even took the field. Like they they had a pick six and then um, a punt return for a touchdown. Like their team is also so complete that I think, and all three of them play each other. So eventually someone's gonna have to come out of it, and I think it's gonna be, um, it is gonna be comical. You said before, like the Pac-12, I think will finally make the playoffs this year, possibly even win it, and then just get disbanded within a month. <laughs> That's just crazy. Do you um do you think there's another like who do you like for Heisman like not named Caleb Williams do you think it'll be Bo Nix if you think like Oregon makes it out do you like Michael Penix do you think Quinn Ewers can make some noise yeah I mean all the names you just said are great I think Quinn Ewers has slowed down a little bit the past few weeks which probably will hurt him yeah um Jaden Daniels for LSU has thrown I believe 17 touchdowns and close to 1200 or 1300 yards already like he's he's having an insane season and he rushes the ball but if LSU um if they keep sliding a little bit, it will hurt him. Um, there's there's just so many so many teams in play for the title, so many players, specifically quarterbacks, in play for the Heisman this year. I don't think we've ever really seen this in college football in the past few yeah. years. And, and Jordan Travis too. I mean, I, I, after I saw how he played LSU Week One, um, he looked great. And I think it's I think it's between obviously Williams, Penix, like you said, Ewers, and Bo Nix. And I think he might be that fifth guy. Like, you, like you see J.J. McCarthy a little bit, you see Sam Hartman a little bit, Jaden Daniels. But like, I think Travis is like a touch above. Like, he's with he's like he's like in between. Like, it's like him and Nix are kind of, and Ewers are kind of in a tier. Williams is in his own tier, then it goes down to Penix. Um, and then I think the rest of the guys are like a notch below. But I think it just kind of looks out for like guys in the, in the Pac-12 where they continue to play really good. Well, really highly ranked teams, but not really good defenses. It could help them out both ways. So, wh- like like you said, like if Oregon makes it out or USC or Washington, they beat both the other two teams in shootouts. That's going to be like I would say probably almost a shoe in if they have one or zero losses. Yeah, if if Bo Nix against USC, if he can put up 400 yards and five touchdowns, right then and there he's winning the Heisman. I think. Like I think they'll just see that he did that against USC and he'll get the Heisman. That'll be his Heisman. That that'll be like the Johnny Manziel juggle play and against Alabama. Yes. Like that, that'll be his Heisman moment. Yes. <laughs> it is crazy that the like we just talked about that the uh, there could be a Pac-12 national champion. Like the top three in Heisman right now are quarterbacks from the Pac-12, which is also yeah even even more. Like I think um, Cam Ward, who we haven't mentioned at Washington State, I think he's fourth right now in like odds, which like. And he's a quarterback at Washington State, which is not a good football program historically whatsoever. So, like, just to see that, and it, it's just crazy how yeah, the season's going so far. Yeah, and I was, uh, like, looking just at, like, the Week 11 schedule. Is that – Week 11 is – it's not rivalry week. No, no, it's not. But you have, no, like – No, that's, no, no, um, After Thanksgiving, but, yeah. Yes, but, like, you got Penn State and Michigan, and you got Oregon USC that weekend. Mm-hmm. That'll be really good. Duke North yeah, Carolina um, talking about football Duke North Carolina too uh, and I was looking at the schedule I was looking at this week's schedule um, Matt I'm gonna give you a little bit of faith here Temple at home against UTSA plus Dude, 14 homecoming I think Temp- oh, I think Temple can win outright I don't even know it's homecoming <laughs> I honestly think Temple can beat UTSA this weekend so you, you might get a win what's the spread <laughs> on that game 14 I think they can win outright 
Oh boy, they look so uh, bad against Miami, and and they yeah, but Miami's good. Crazy slate they, that we, I'm looking like Georgia, like uh, Ole Miss, Georgia, uh, Texas will be playing TCU. The Florida State's playing Miami. Washington's playing Utah. That's, that's for a week good eleven, slate. right? That's all Veterans Day weekend. Yeah, yeah. It's all it's all that same weekend. There's like there's like eight games that are two ranked teams, and there's a couple games Perfect. that are like really 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 good ones. Yeah, perfect. Um, but back on Temple, dude, they looked so bad against Tulsa too last week. I don't know, dude. They're not good, but it is homecoming, so there might be twelve thousand people there instead of like four thousand people. There you go. That's all that matters. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see. But um, you guys have anything else you want to talk about before we wrap this up? Uh, no, I'm not I'm good. I think we I think we touched it all. We kind of hit all the uh, main points and takeaways so far. All right, sounds good. So we'll see you guys at our week five reaction in a few days. Probably they've been coming out on Wednesday, so you can look forward to that there. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, we'd appreciate it if you leave a rating or review over there. It definitely means a lot. And if you're on YouTube, dropping a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a comment with any of your thoughts and opinions on anything we talked about here. So yeah, thank you guys all for watching and listening, and we'll catch you guys in the week five reaction. Peace.